I welcome everyone. Um, if you can see him, uh, you know, can everyone. I ask you, can you something? Him. Okay. Uh, like, can we deploy a PHP file on Heroku or Netlify? Yes. Just the one question. Yes, okay, okay. we can. All right. So let's move on. Okay. So others will be joining us. I'm. I will try and I'll make sure maybe they can join without me admitting them into the meeting so that it will be easy for them to join in into the meeting. Is that right? Come in, just give me a few seconds. I'll solve that. Okay. All right, let's move on. OK, so once again, the top pick is deploying apps on Heroku, Heroku and Netlify. My name is Elayode Enoch. I'm a Microsoft Lens student ambassador uh, from Madekun Legacy University, Ondo State, Nigeria, and I'm really glad to have you all here. So this is the agenda for today. I quickly introduce you uh, to Microsoft Lens student ambassador, uh, what it entails, then introduction to cloud computing, introduction to Git and GitHub, uh, what is Heroku and Netlify? Then we go on to the practical session, which is going to be very great. The practical session is going to be very, very great. So the next thing that we're going to be having is uh, questions, just like uh, you've been asking questions over the day. I really love to hear more questions and then we give it a close to the day, for the day. OK, so once again, I'm saying welcome. Um, we quickly check on how many people are joining and where you're joining from. You can quickly go to slido.com. Go to slido.com on your browser. Slido.com on your browser. And then use the code AAUA. Are you all there? So go to studio.com and enter. Uh, I'll just start the. Okay. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, you're audible. All right. Okay. I said, are, are you on Slido now? Yes, I'm on. Okay. So I'll be sharing my Slido screen. Now, okay, so let me just change this. So we want to know how many people are joining us, where you're joining us from, and some little information about you, okay? All right. So where are you joining from? Just text where you're joining from. Let's see. Where people are joining from, just type the country you're joining from. Is that right? The country where you're joining from. Let's have, let's have that. All right. So already on Slido. Okay, we have from Bangladesh. We have somebody from Bangladesh. All right. Who else? Okay. From Bangladesh, Nigeria, that's great. Where else do we have participants joining from? We are from Bangladesh, Nigeria. Okay, who else? All right. Okay, we have from two countries. We have from Bangladesh, Nigeria. We are from India. That's great. We have someone from India. That's really great. It's nice to have you. You're welcome. Okay, Nigeria is taking the lead. Okay, we have people joining us from those states in Nigeria too. Okay. All right, Nigeria is taking the lead. <laughs> Anyways, we have. Uh, someone joining us from Nihum, is that you? Afinayak from India, that's great. We'll be expecting others to join us. 
are in the meeting. OK, so now let's go to the next poll. Let me just give you the next poll. So we have people from India, Indonesia, uh, sorry, India, Nigeria and Bangladesh. OK, so now let's go to the next one. OK, so what's your favorite programming language? What's your favorite programming language? So if you're a programmer and you know any language, what's your favorite program? Python. Python is taking the lead. C++, wow, that is great. Okay, we're waiting for some more. Python and C++, all right. What else do we have? What else do we have? PHP, wow, <laughs> that's great. Okay, I'll wait for just a minute more so that we can go into the meeting directly. Is that all right? Okay, just one more. We have Python, C++, and PHP. All right. I can see JavaScript, I can see Ruby, I can see a lot of other languages. I can see C sharp, I can see C. <laughs> All right. Oh, someone doesn't know any language. Don't worry, you'll get familiar with at least one today. Yeah, you're welcome. At least you know you know English language, but you don't know your programming language. That's all right. Okay, it's not too bad to start now. Okay, I'll be handing um this uh, questions. Now let's move to the training. Let's move to the training now. All right. So let me share my screen again and we'll begin very well. All right, so we are done with the Slido games and we have people from Bangladesh. Um, we have people from India, we have someone from India. And we have a lot of people joining him from Nigeria. And once again, I say you're welcome. OK, so introduction to Microsoft Lens Student Ambassador. So um, everyone um, building something new, building something great and amazing needs a community. A community is like a family that you can uh, grow together, learn together, and also uh, teach others. So the Microsoft Learn, Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors program is actually a program to help students to learn and then to reach out to others in learning new skills and then solving real world problems. And then we build communities around the globe. There are a lot of opportunities uh, in Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador. For example, uh, just because of the um, pandemic, But now, um, they should be translating very soon. All right. OK, sorry, I think that was the network. OK, so. There are a lot of traveling restrictions, but my, I think Microsoft will be hosting uh, an event next week on t um, in Nigeria, in Lagos. Um, I think Tuesday, that should be Tuesday, and it's going to be uh, a Microsoft office opening in Nigeria, in Lagos, Nigeria. So some ambassadors will be attending. There's some other opportunities that are of our conferences around the globe. And then as a student ambassador, you can get invited to any of these conferences in foreign countries. OK, let's move on. Now let's move on to cloud computing. I'll be very fast on this. Um, just like getting, we can have some minutes for the theory and then we move to the practical. I want us to actually put our hands to the practical session. OK, so what is cloud? The term cloud refers to a network or Internet. In other words, we can say that cloud is something which is present at a remote location. Cloud can provide services over public and private networks. That is, we have the one, LAN and then VPN. Then applications such as email, web conferencing, customer relationship uh, man management uh, execute on the cloud. So the cloud is actually uh, accessing uh, resources, files, resources including files, media, software, uh, remotely without actually having them on your laptop. For example, you can actually watch a video on YouTube without downloading them on your PC, maybe your phone or your laptop. 
that's the work of cloud. You can actually access files remotely without actually getting them on your file. And now uh, we, we've got a lot of advancement in technology nowadays, and you don't have to actually install some softwares on your system to be to use them. If you're a graphics designer, if you're into graphics designer, you surely know about remove.bg. Remove.bg is a simulator of um, Photoshop and a lot of other softwares. You can actually um, remove the background of a photo and then add some other effects and download it on your PC and use for any other design without actually installing this software on your system. That is cloud. And it works through the internet. You don't connect, you don't work on the cloud without the internet. So that's the first thing I wanted to know. So cloud computing refers to manipulating, configuring and assessing the hardware and software resources remotely. It offers online storage, infrastructure and application. Now, cloud doesn't mean, oh, that particular machine is in the cloud. It looks like that because we connect remotely, but it's not the cloud you can see. It has a physical location too. It has physical hardware and it, ha it has software installed on those hardware. So actually when we're talking about cloud, we're not talking about the skies. We're talking about actually there's another computer, a huge machine somewhere acting as our own computer. So you can actually access the computer from your home PC. Now, what's, what, the main advantage is that you don't have to install those softwares on your system. It doesn't have to take up your memory space. It doesn't have to take up um, your, your, your system resources. You use the external system resources, but you have to be connected to the internet. So cloud computing refers to manipulating, configuring, and accessing hardware and uh, software resources remotely. Okay. Now, continuation of cloud computing. It offers platform in, uh, in independency as the software is not required to be installed. I mentioned that. Hence, cloud computing is making our business applications mobile and collaborative. Okay, I guess some people here are into design, Figma design. You can actually collaborate on, on projects with your team members, especially when we now have hybrid working conditions where the people in the office in person and some people are working virtually around the globe. You can collaborate with your team on GitHub. We are going to be doing Git and GitHub very soon, but those are the uh, applications and advantages of the cloud, of cloud computing. It is making business applications mobile and collaborative, and it provides means of accessing the applications as utilities over the internet. It allows us to create, configure, and customize the applications online. All right, you have uh, Google Docs and then you have Microsoft Docs. You can actually use uh, the Microsoft Docs Office 365 online without having to install it on your PC. And then you get all the features you need, all the, the editing tools you need. And also when you're working with Microsoft Forms, you can actually create forms and do a lot of amazing things without actually having to install any external software on your system or your laptop. That is what I'm saying, okay? Let's talk about deployment models. Deployment models define the types of access to the cloud. That is how the cloud is located. So people can have, uh, we, we have four types of uh, access. That is the public access, the private access, the hybrid, and the community. So let's look at them one after the other. Okay, so if I'm too fast, just tell me, am I too fast? Is everyone there? Okay. I think we can move on. Yes, sir. Okay, everything is all right. We can move on, right? Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So the public cloud allows systems and services to be.
I can't hear you again, sir. Hello, sir. All right, I hope you can hear me now. I, I lost access to the internet and then yeah. I'm back. All right, sorry. Yes, sir. All right, let's move on. Okay. No problem. We're actually talking about public cloud. Um, uh, public cloud allows systems and services to be easily accessed. <laughs> sorry. Sorry about that noise coming. Okay, you're welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. Sorry, I muted you. Okay, the public cloud allows systems and services to be easily accessible to the general public. Public cloud may be less secure because of its openness, and then you already saw that. Then private cloud allows systems and services to be accessible within an organization. It is more secure because of its private nature. If a particular uh, company can actually buy access to a cloud uh, infrastructure, and then they are the only person that have access to it. That is kind of secured more than the public cloud, whereby anyone can access uh, the resources. Then the community cloud allows systems and services to be accessible by a group of organi organizations. And the hybrid cloud is a mixture of public and private cloud in which the critical activities are performed using private cloud, while the non-critical activities are performed using public cloud. Okay, so let's move to the service models. Uh, we're moving quickly to Git and GitHub very soon. Cloud computing is based on service models. These are category, uh, categorized into three basic service models. We have infrastructure as a service, uh, platform as a service, uh, so, and software as a service. So, and then we also have something new, uh, that's XAS, anything as a service, which is yet another model. It includes network as a service, business as a service, excuse me, identity as a service, Database as a service or strategy as a service, but the th three main uh, major service models, the basic service models are infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. So let's look at them one after the other. So the infrastructure as a service is the most basic level of service. Each of the service models inherit the security and management mechanism from the underlying model as shown in the following diagram. So you can see the diagram. So IIS is uh, the most basic level of service it is as the it is at the base you can see virtual machines server storage and networks and then we have platforms which include database web server deployment tools which is what we are going to be doing today we're going to be looking at platform as a service which is actually made with, for developers and we have application which contains customer relationship management that is crm email games virtual, virtual desktop like you have your different softwares different softwares all right so and then we have the cloud clients which uh, includes the web browser your mobile app and then the team client okay so i already explained infrastructure as a service it provides access to fundamental resources such as physical machines virtual machines uh virtual storage you can actually store your files online uh store a lot of uh, information online using infrastructure as a service it, it's mostly used by companies to actually uh, secure their files. Development and deployment tools. Then we have software as a service. Uh, it's, it's a model which allows software applications as a service to end users. Okay, I mentioned that, for example, you have different applications like Photoshop, online Photoshop, online uh, 360, uh, Microsoft 365 and the rest. Okay, so let's move on to Git and GitHub. If you have any question, there'll be room to answer the question at the end of at the end of um, the meeting. Okay. So what we learned at this module is how Git came about. 
repositories, um, commits, branches. Okay, the first thing I want you to know about version control. Okay, so version control is actually just like the name sounds. Version control. You can build a particular application. Is that right? You can build a particular application, and then you want to move. You want you you made an upgrade to the application. You had to change some lines of code. You had to add some other features. So what would you like? What you, what will you do? You will have to actually copy the old version, make uh, a copy of it, then have the new version, then edit the new version, and then you have a lot of versions. For example, you are having ten versions. Then you that means you are having ten different files. 10 different files, and maybe you have each file contain around 200 megabytes. So you are having like two gigabytes space being covered on your system. Now, version control came to solve that. So you have to have a lot of folders previously, but now version control came to solve that with Git. So now uh, you can actually uh, track your codes and then have versions. So version control systems record changes over time. So as you change, as you make changes, as you commit your changes, the system records that. Then you can roll back to any version, any previous version that you have used before. Then we have the distributed uh, version control systems, which keep complete history on computers of all contributors. So as I said earlier, the cloud allows us to actually collaborate on projects. So when you're collaborating on projects, you can actually have uh, the, 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 the complete history on all those computers. So, okay, and then Git uh, was introduced, by, was made by Linus Tovars in 2005 for Linux kernel. All right, so you can actually download Git. We are going to be using it today. You know, I already installed it on my PC, so I don't need to download it again. So that's the link. You can just search for Git, and then you would install Git. Either you're using Windows, Mac, or Linux. Anyone you're using, actually. I'm using Windows. All right, Windows by Microsoft. OK, so you can actually download Git on your system. We're going to be using it today. All right, so let's talk about repositories. So Git is actually an offline version control system. Offline, that means it works directly on your PC. It works directly on your PC. Now, what is uh, repositories? Repositories is actually uh, moving your, on, uh, your offline uh, version control uh, projects to a cloud uh, let me say a cloud storage, a cloud storage. So repos are virtual storage for a particular project. For a project, they contain many files and folders and subfolders, and then you can have unlimited repos. So you start by using Git to create a repo with Git init in terminal on, or on GitHub. So I'm going to take you through, when we get to the practical session, how to create an account on GitHub and how to move our local code from VS Code to get up and then we deploy the applications and then I'm going to be adding how to shorten the URLs when you're sending to your friends to actually check up. Maybe you built your portfolio and then you want them to check up uh, your projects and you don't want to pay a dime for the uh, hosting and domain registration. I'm going to take you through all that in this um, session. Okay, so the next thing I, I explained repositories. Repositories are virtual storage for your project. So a commit is a unique snapshot or save of the whole project at a point in time. Okay, for example, I just made uh, my, I, I have three pages for my portfolio. I said the index page, the home page, the about page, and then the contact me page. So actually after finishing the, uh, the home page, I, have, I haven't started work on the about page and then the contact page. I can actually commit my work where I was. So it saves, it creates a, a snapshot of the whole project at that point. So when I make a commit, it's going to actually commit all those project files at that point. So I can roll back to that point whenever I'm, I, I just want to roll back. So a commit contains a descriptive message. It's author, date, and time the commit was made. We're going to be seeing that when we get to the practical session. The commits are identified by SHA-1 hashes. So that it's actually a form of uh, encoding for security. Then you have unlimited commits in the repo. You can make unlimited commits in your repo. Then you commit by using uh, the git commit command in terminal or by making changes and clicking uh, 
commit button in GitHub. Okay. All right. So sorry about that. I had to admit somebody in the, to the meeting. Okay, so best practices when you are making commits on GitHub, use descriptive and detailed commit messages. So we will be actually working on something very soon. So use descriptive and detailed commit messages. What does that mean? When you're making a commit, don't say, oh, I I I worked on index of PHP or I want I, I, I changed some things in uh, style of CSS. Be descriptive. Oh, I added uh, a section in the home page. Maybe I added uh, the the the, the uh, let me say the portfolio section, or maybe let me say the services section in the home page. That is very descriptive. So when you are going back, it's actually very easy for you to know. Oh, this is what I changed. This is what I changed. This is what was happening. So your commit should be atomic. Make small changes and commit. Don't try and make big changes after writing 1,000 lines of code and then you commit. Oh, what happens if something got wrong in those 1,000 lines of code? And that means you have to be reviewing a lot of codes. Let's say you write, I can say maybe five to 10 lines. Let me say 10 lines, 10 to 20 lines. So you can actually commit your code at that point and you will know, oh, at this point, this is what I was doing. When you're moving to the next stage of the project, okay, this is what I was doing at this point. So make small changes and commit. And then avoid committing many unrelated changes. For example, you added a commit. There's no need to actually commit that. Oh, I just added a commit. There's no need. You can actually commit something that are, are very much uh, feasible and that are going to make a lot of changes in your project. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. Branches. So what are branches? Just like you have a tree, you have a lot of branches on a tree. So what does that mean? The same tree, right? But different branches. What does, what does that mean? You can actually go to any of the branch and get uh, a particular thing. For example, you have a mango tree, and it has a lot of branches. The same mango tree produces the same fruits, right? But you've got uh, a lot of endpoints where you can actually get the fruits. So in uh, on GitHub, branches are actually uh, a stage, like a, a particular section of your project. You can actually make a branch and then add a special feature. They are used to actually add features and additions to your project. So you can say, okay, we want to add a particular feature. Let's make a branch. And after making that uh, feature work, you can merge it with the original uh, branch, which is the main branch. It was previously called the master branch. So you can actually merge it with your uh, the main branch after you have actually added the new feature on this other branch and you can delete the branch. Once you are done with using it, you can actually delete the branch. OK, so and then as, as I said, branches can be merged. So let's move to the next thing. OK, I, this is just an explanation. This is a, an interface on GitHub. You'll be seeing this very soon. OK, so and this is how branches work. You have a little feature. You can see the little feature. This is a master branch. Then you have a big feature, which is another branch. And after you are done, you merge with the master branch, which is the main branch. And then you can delete the branches you created. OK. This is just an explanation the more. Let me just move on. Okay, so the summary of all we had on Git and GitHub is fashion control is indispensable. You really need a, uh, a repository or a repo short form is a project container, a virtual project container. Commits are unique moments in history. Branches contain many commits and then you can actually fork a repo to make a copy of it. That's on GitHub. Then you can make changes and commit them. Then you can send a pull request to contribute. Okay, so what is Heroku, Netlify, and SWA? All right, SWA is not part of the flyer, it's not part of the uh, plan, but now we've got it because it's a Microsoft product and I would love to introduce it to us. It is actually Azure Static Web Apps. So you are going to be knowing a little about that. Uh, uh, that is Azure Static Web Apps. So if you are just coming in, we are welcome. I can see SK, I can see some other people joining. God bless you. Okay, so. Heroku, Netlify, and Azure web, uh, static web apps. So what is Heroku? You can see the logo. Heroku is a cloud platform as a service. You remember when we did service models of cloud computing, PaaS, supporting several programming languages. So one of the first cloud platforms, Heroku has been developed since 2007, when it, uh, only, when it supported only the Ruby, Ruby programming language, but now supports Java, Node.js, Scalar, Clojure,
All right, sorry about that. So for this reason, uh, Roku is said to be a, a polyglot platform as it has features for a developer to build, run, scale applications in a similar manner across most languages. So Roku was uh, acquired by Salesforce in 2010 for $212 million. Okay, that's just the basics about Roku. Roku can actually uh, help you as a developer to deploy different applications in different programming languages. You can deploy Python uh, programs, you can deploy PHP programs, Scala programs. I'm going to show you some websites that are actually um, deployed on Heroku. I didn't have to pay a dime for that. I just had to host on GitHub and then deploy on Heroku. Then the next is Netlify. So Netlify is a San Francisco based cloud computing company that offers hosting and serverless backend services for web applications and static websites. Remember, static websites. So the company uh, provides hosting for service uh, for websites whose source files are stored in the version control system Git and then generated into static web content files via a CDN, a CDN content delivery network. Given the limitations of the purely static model, um, the company later expanded services to include content management systems, the CMS, and features of serverless computing to handle websites with interactive features. Okay, I want you to know that um, Heroku supports PHP very well, supports PHP code deployment, but Netlify does not. But there's a way to go about it. You actually have to add uh, a build.sh uh, script in your PHP uh, uh, home directory on Git, and then it will work on Netlify. Okay, let's move on. So what is Azure Static Web Apps? So it's a service that automatically builds and deploys full stack web apps to Azure from a code repository. So the workflow of a, a Azure Static Web Apps is tailored to a developer's daily workflow. Apps are built and deployed based off uh, code changes. When you create an Azure Static Web Apps resource, Azure interacts directly with GitHub or Azure DevOps to monitor a branch of your choice. Okay, can we see this is the workflow? So you can actually from Git, uh, sorry, from VS Code, you can actually install the Azure um, uh, extension, and then you can actually make a, a static web apps on Azure on the go from VS Code. Okay. So these are the static web apps, uh, like the libraries you can actually use. Uh, when creating static web apps on Azure, you can use Angular, you can use uh, React, Svelte, Vue, or Blazor. And then, um, you know, these apps normally include the, uh, your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay, we'll not be going much into that today. Now let's move on to the practical session. Okay, I, I guess somebody will be happy about that. So I will stop sharing my screen now. Get ready. We are going to be looking at uh, um, a lot of things. Right now, I will, firstly, I will go through creating a GitHub account. The next, uh, creating an Heroku account. And the next, creating a Netlify account. And then we work directly from VS Code. We, dip, uh, we host our, we make a repository on GitHub. Then we actually uh, move our version controlled projects from our local system to a remote server that is on our repo on GitHub, and then we deploy on Netlify and the Roku. And then I will teach you how to actually shorten the links that you have actually created because it's going to be very long. It's going to be your project name.roku.com. Then you can actually make it shorter so that your friends can actually get it easily. Okay, let's move on to the next aspect of the training today. Okay. So I'll be sharing my browser screen. I'll be sharing my browser screen. All right. Okay, I hope you can see my screen now. I think it's working fine. All right, this is my account on GitHub. I'll just log out. I'll just uh, log out and then let's see some other things we can actually do. Okay, is that right? Are we on the same page?
מסתכם. אוקיי, אז אתם יכולים לגעת 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 All right, github.com, and then you click on, on sign up. All right, I have a video on this, sorry about that. Github.com, then click on sign up here. So you actually need your email address uh, while signing up. Okay. So you enter your email address here. I already have an account, so I'm not creating another account. So it's e easily uh, done. It's, you, can, you can see an error message saying email is invalid already taken. I already registered. So I'm going to sign in. You can register on your own end. And if you already have um, an account, there's no need to actually create another one again. So you sign in. So I'm already signing in. Okay, so I have a lot of This is the interface. I already tweaked some things. The uh, interface is a little different. The appearance is a little different. So um, I have my repositories. I can check my repositories. You can see my repositories. You can check me over at Enoch1234 on, okay, on GitHub. So these are my repositories. You might not have that on your, that's no problem. All right, so going back home from the home section, you click on new to create a new repository. Is that all right? So let's create a new repository. So I actually have a template. Um, I just downloaded a web template. So we are going to be working with that. We are going to be actually working um, with the particular uh, website. It's just a template, a website template. So you're going to be able to see it on your hand too when I'm done. So the repository name, let's just name it. Um, A U A Roku class. Okay, and you can say this project is to test deployment on a Roku. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. Netlify. All right. I'm going to make it private. I can make it public if you want to actually get it. I will make it private. So then you click on create repository. All right, that is done. So you have this page, which is your username forward slash the name of the repository you created. And then if it's either private or public, it's private. And then it's not visible to everybody. So now what, <clears throat> sorry about that. So now you have uh, some commands there right here, telling you how to actually add your files from your local system to GitHub. All right, let's do that. So I have a project, I said, I have a little project. I didn't build anything on it, it's just a template. Let me just open up. I hope you can see, see my screen. Okay, let me just open up the project. As I said earlier, Heroku accepts automatically PHP projects. Before we go on, let me just quickly show you my portfolio. So, LOI for slash Enoch. So that's my portfolio loading. Uh, it's on GitHub. And then I deployed it on Heroku. Can you see that? So it's actually deployed on Heroku. I didn't pay a single amount to get it on Heroku. Oh, cool. So this is what I'm going to be doing today. If you have your portfolio projects, you have your portfolio ready, get ready to deploy it and show it to your friends. Okay, so this is the website. You can check it up with you. Bit.ly for slash Okay. Get up later. And then I have some others too that I deployed using Heroku. Okay. 
Now, let's let's go to the project files. I have a project. I think it's GitHub class. Okay, you open up the project, and then you open with VS Code. Open with code. Okay, so we have the project files here. Sorry. Okay. So a lot of them here. So I'm not going to be doing anything. This is just a website um, templates that we're actually going to be using today. Okay, so now let's quickly do some things and let's move this project from our local system to our, our virtual storage. That is our repository on GitHub. So you press Control and then the uh, the curly line, and then you move to your terminal in VS Code. And then the first thing you type is Git init. That's initialization. So Git init. So Git init, and then after. Uh, Initializing Git. I told you Git is local. It is local, so your system is not actually uh, online yet. It's a version control system on your personal computer. So the next thing you you do is you add all the files in this particular project to the Git uh, version control you already created. So what do you do? You write Git add dot that's that's a period. Okay, and then every of those files will be added. Can you see that every of those files have been added? Okay, that is done. So what's the next thing you do? You commit your files. So let's say git commit dash m. That's, that means you're committing your files. Remember, I would say commits are great uh, changes in what we are doing in your project. So you're making our first commit. You can just say First commit, and you hit enter. All right, so everything is done, and then we actually have this project as a fashion controlled project on our local system. So we want to push it to GitHub, which is our virtual um, environment, which is our virtual storage for our project. So you actually select a branch. Uh, I, I spoke about the branch the other time in GitHub. You can create several other branches, but we are going to be working with the main branch here. So copy this line of code. Is it here? Okay, so you already set, um, automatically it sets, but you already set your branch to be the main branch. So the next thing is you add this remote that are repository to your, to your files on your local system. So what's going to happen is that this is actually going to link up with the GitHub repository we created on GitHub. So you copy that line of code, you paste it, and then, okay. All right, so that is done. So the next thing is you push. All right, so we have push and pull. What does push means? Push means, let me just say, make an example. You are throwing something online. You are pushing it online. You are moving it from your local system to, uh, an online repository that is push and then this line of code has some things i want you to note we have git push dash u origin main so dash u means you're setting an upstream for your projects upstream means oh this is where i always want to push my code to so instead of writing the same number lines of code uh let me say times with that number you just write git push you don't have to write git push you or uh, the shoe origin main again you already set an up upstream that you want to always uh push your project files to the main branch so just copy this line of code paste it and hit enter okay so as you can see it is writing the project uh the object files and then very soon we have it on github okay so now go back to GitHub and click on code or refresh GitHub. What do you have now? You have all these files. All these files are on my local system. Do you know they are on my local system? And you have it all here. So 
from here. This is on my local system. I have it now on GitHub, which that simple command. OK, so. That is uh, how to actually push your local. Um, project from VS Code to GitHub. So that's actually the first step uh, in this tutorial. All right, let's move to the next thing. So the next thing is you already have your project here and then GitHub is actually telling you to create a readme file. What's a readme file? A readme file is a markdown file on GitHub, which actually tells users uh, or gives information about uh, the project. So you can actually create a readme file and then uh, you have the H1 with um, with the uh, hash, hash sign, then we are, you have hash hash that is H2. So you can actually read on uh, GitHub Markdown and then you learn a lot of things, how to link images, how to add links and some other stuff. But I'm not going to add anything here. So we already have our, our description. Let me just save it. So uh, most importantly, you are committing the file. So now something that I want you to notice is that I made a change right now online. This is not on my local system again. This is not on my local system again. So if I go back to VS Code. Let me try and make some changes. And let's say, let me just say Enoch. OK. And then I save. Let's say I want to. I already made a change. All right. And then I commit, I say. So changed page title index, sorry, index title Enoch. And I hit enter. All right, so now let me try and push this to GitHub. Git push. Now you have an error. You have an error saying some things already happened. So what do you do? Just write git match. All right, and then you push now. OK. So now it's telling us that some things that um that actually happened online, which is not offline. So what do you do? You pull, git pull. All right, so everything is done and then. OK, so the the markdown file we created is now here online. It was online and then we pulled it and then it's now um, offline with us and then we can actually work with it. We can make changes to it from here and then send it back to GitHub. OK. So the next thing is how to deploy this application on Heroku. I told you I deployed this on Heroku. There are some other beautiful apps like this. I deployed on Heroku on GitHub. I used GitHub as my hosting and then I deployed on Heroku. This is actually built with PHP. It's actually built with PHP. OK. 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 So I go to Heroku.com. Sorry, I think that's the internet. All right. So as I said earlier, I already have an account on Heroku. I already have an account on Heroku. So what do you do is uh, when you get, let me lo just log out this account. Let me sign out. And then you can actually create a new account. Let me see if I can quickly do that. You sign up. Click on sign up. And then you just enter. You, you create a new account. Your name, your first name, your last name, email address, your company name, which is not important. Uh, your role in the company, your country or region, and then your primary development language. Then surely you're not a robot. You create a free account. But for now, me, I'm going to log in my account. 
then I think I only have access to create five applications on my free plan. And I already created five applications. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be deleting one of the applications. Let me check which one to delete. Let me delete this. OK. I can actually go to settings. All right, so I deleted an application. So once you log in on Oracle, after you confirm the account, you logged in, okay, you click on new. So firstly, from the offline um, project, let's see what we have. Let me open the index file and let's see what we have. Okay, this is a project. Remember, this is offline. This is my local drive, the folders, the folder directory, and then we have this particular file here. This particular website. So you, it can be any website, it can be your personal project, it can be any little project you're working on. And you can want to actually test the features online, you want to actually show it to your friends, you want to actually collaborate on the project and you, you don't want to pay yet, but you actually want to test the project online. So you, this is the actual project offline. I'm sorry, it's just a little messy. I would have loved to build a simple application, but this is what we have for now. Okay, this is offline, remember? So go to Heroku and click on new, create new hub, okay? So you give the hub a name, say git, let me say AUA Heroku class. Is that right? Then it will add, you have an information if the app name is available or not. So the, app, the hub name is available, I create the hub. So you create the hub. Okay, so we have a lot of uh, CLI. Um, this is the command line interface um, commands, the codes. But you don't need to actually do that. You can actually deploy your applications easily by adding GitHub a repo. So you click on GitHub here, you choose the deployment method, and that is GitHub. All right, so I already connected my account. So when you choose, on, choose GitHub, you have, if you are connected for the first time, you actually get uh, an interface to actually add your GitHub account to Heroku. So once you've added your GitHub account to Heroku and the, you are, you're good to go, you search for your repo name here. So the repo name, I think, should be AAUA Heroku. The name doesn't have to be correct. Let's just search for that if we can actually find it. All right. So we have a Heroku class and then connect. Okay. So you already connected the application, the, I mean, the repository to Heroku. Now, that's, there are several things you need to know. You can enable automatic deploys. I wouldn't advise that. Automatic deploys is that once you make any changes in your code and you push to GitHub, Heroku automatically deploys the application, rebuilds the application, and that actually wastes a lot of uh, resources. For example, Heroku uh, free plan, this is a free plan, I'm using a free plan, uses uh, uh gives limits to users to free users on the uh on the let's say amount of deploys they can make per day so if you exhaust your deploys per day you can't go again so you don't enable automatic deploys that's an advice so that you don't waste your um the number of deployments per day then you, I, I told you the other time you might have different branches on your repo or for now we are have, still having the main branch just the main branch and then you deploy your branch Okay, so deploy branch. Okay, so okay. All right, I was on arrow. Let's check.
Hello everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, All right. we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good evening. Sorry about the break. My system just disconnected from the internet and I'm fixing that. So I will join you very soon. But I'm still online on my mobile. All right, so you just deploy the application. I'm waiting for it to be connected again. Sorry about that. So you deploy the application um, and then you get the output. So let's just wait till I get internet again on my PC and we continue. Okay. All right. So the next thing we are going to be doing after deploying on Heroku is to deploy on Netlify too. We're going to be deploying the same application on Netlify. So while waiting for my internet connection, you can actually go to netlify.com and create an account. You can go to netlify.com and create an account. I think that'd be really great to do now. If you don't have a Netlify account, you can actually quickly go and create an account so that you can actually have access to the interface when they get it. So if you actually have um, a portfolio website built with PHP, I would advise I would advise Heroku is the best way for you. And to add to this, you can also deploy dynamic web applications on Heroku. So what do I mean by dynamic? Dynamic means you have a database. You have a database, maybe PostgreSQL, MySQL, or any of your databases, uh, you, you have implemented your project, but there are ways to do it. You have to download an external software, which is remote uh, DB, and then you have to connect. Uh, a lot of, it, it has a lot of stress, actually, but it's worth it. If you really want to go through a uh, hit and then make sure you deploy a dynamic web application. It's easy to deploy a static application on both platforms, but if you're going to be deploying dynamic applications with databases, you will have uh, some technicalities. And then which I can actually help you with if you need uh, any of those um, information on how to actually connect your my MySQL, that's it, MySQL to PHP project on Heroku. Is that all right? So I'm sorry, my system is not still connecting to the internet. Just have to wait a little. Okay, so just if you have any question so far, you can actually uh, just between uh, them in the chat section. Is that right? You can put them in the chat section. All right. So I'm just hoping the internet works again. And then we can continue. OK. All right, let me let me just share my screen from mobile. Um, all right, I'm sharing my mobile screen now. Can you can you see my mobile screen? Hello. Hello. There, there. No. Okay, not yet. You can see my mobile screen. Ah, uh, we can see. Okay, sir. So I can see, sir. Sir, how do I? I can see you. Okay, sir. All right. So, I think I will just continue from here. My mobile. Is that right? Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. And go back to Europe.com. Let me log in.
All right. Sorry about that. Well, um, okay. Let me just turn up my screen around. We will have a better view. Okay. This is my project. Okay, the last bit was not successful. Let's go back to deploy. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry, sir. Thank you. Okay, so that's an actually that, that was an error on the project. Okay. Let me, let me check. Okay, so what I'll be doing is I'll be, I'll be adding, let me disconnect, I'll be disconnecting this particular project. I think that was an error with project and I'll be adding a previously added project from this up. Okay, so I actually created uh, a project. Um, I think the, the name is Full Freedom. Just so that is correct. That's financial freedom. It's actually a website. Okay. okay. Let me check. I think it was test. Okay. Okay. So let me connect. Testing. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Let's deploy the project. Okay. That's really going on. So, the test thing is actually a project I worked on. Okay. So, that is successfully done. Okay. All right. So, this is the project. I just launched right now, but I just deployed right now on the real Can you see? I would have loved if my uh, PC could actually connect and we can see it on my PC. But that's no problem actually. Okay, so. It's actually from GitHub. This was the application that was deployed on Aero. So this is the link. I have a very long link. Very long link. But let's let's do that for now. So the next thing will be to uh, deploy on Netlify. Deploy on Netlify. Go to new Netlify.com. Let me just log in. I already have an account to yeah. there. Just log in. Let me just log in. Ah, we are no, we did. All right. Sorry about the issue. Yeah, I can't yeah, can 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 yourself. Can you yourself? All right. So I log in with my mail. I already have. Let me just quickly type that. So, uh -huh. hello, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Okay, all right. So, so, this is Netlify. You set up your account. All right. Submit yourself. You set up your account.